Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I've got three stories to cover for you in this very latest Moon Lambo hot jam, including this one from the Daily Hoddle, which uh, covers something written by the World Economic Forum. And the World Economic Forum, uh, they are effectively praising XRP along with some other cryptocurrencies out there, and I'll explain exactly what I mean by that. Um, there's also this story from you today, titled... A uh, Flare Networks CEO Hugo Fillion explains why Flare's mainnet launch is postponed. And so this is a topic that I've I've covered. We found it at some point. When was that? At some point, I feel like within the last week or so, we found out that indeed Flare Network, as expected, um, was going to be delayed. And then we found out about uh, the new blockchain and other tokens that you're getting for free if you claimed your Spark tokens anyway. Uh, you'll also be getting the Songbird token. And so this article goes into greater detail, among other things, as to why this delay ultimately happened. And uh, look, I'll, I'll say even right here at the outset, something that I've, I've said a number of times before, that's worth repeating. It's that I, I personally am perfectly fine with there being a delay. A lot of times in development of software in general... Uh, you know, things do take longer. People aren't that great at predicting the amount of effort and work that's going to go into to putting something together. And so in the case of something as important as this, uh, rather than rush this out because you only get one chance to launch this thing, uh, I'd say test it as thoroughly as you possibly can. And if that means we don't get it as quickly as we want, well, then we can just suck it up. Because I, I think that you need to optimize for uh, s security and functionality over, uh, over, you know, speediness, <laughs> effectively. Uh, and then there was this article just for fun, unrelated to XRP, but just interesting nonetheless, just from Cointelegraph. Global crypto ATM installations have increased by 70% in 2021, which I think is cool. It's just, it's another one of those stories that just shows, hey, greater crypto adoption. You can see the direction things are going. Uh, now, I am curious, have any of you listening used a crypto ATM? I personally have not because I'm normal. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just having a little fun. I'm sure some of you out there listening have used it. It doesn't mean you're not normal. Uh, but I, I am wondering, like, who who's using these and why rather than just hopping on a cryptocurrency exchange? I'm just kind of curious. Uh, but but uh, hey, if, if this is getting people to adopt super duper, I'm all for it. But um, I do want to be clear. I don't have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who likes making YouTube videos purely as a fun hobby. Shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf for sending this first piece my way about the World Economic Forum. Uh, yeah, basically praising XRP along with some other cryptocurrencies here. And the World Economic Forum, just to be clear so that you, you have a feel for who they are because they are influential. All right, They're engaging with... Uh, the, the most important people on, and entities on the planet. So check this out. The four, this is on their this is their mission right here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, the World Economic Forum is the international organization for public-private cooperation. The forum engages the four most political, business, cultural, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. So. They know everyone, effectively. This is actually a big deal. And so, ultimately, what the World Economic Forum did is they recently put out uh, just this document, which was kind of, in a general sense, getting people a feel for cryptocurrency and just how important, frankly, it is. And at the end of this this uh, this piece this uh, that, they, that they put together, they were noting how difficult it was to choose what to cover in this document. Uh, and so they just picked out the, 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 some cryptocurrencies that they think are going to have a tremendous impact. That's ultimately what they did. And they picked six cryptocurrencies, which are on your screen right now. And it was it was interesting to see that from a technical perspective in terms of, uh, you know, throughput and it really just transactions per second cost, like XRP is number one on this list. And, and so here's what they wrote about the XRP and the XRP ledger. They wrote, the XRP ledger is a global open source public blockchain that focuses on payments as a use case. Uh, XRP boasts 1,500 transactions per second, costs 0.0003 cents per transaction, and settles in three seconds. The following resources are available to learn more about scalability. And then they shared some links, including the GitHub, developer documents, and uh, the XRPL uh, .org website. And, and and so even here, this is something worth knowing. Uh, yeah, so fine. 1,500 transactions per second. We're nowhere near tapping out that many. Not even close. Even after almost a decade of adoption. But 
1,500 transactions per second actually isn't going to be enough. For a globally adopted XRP, 1,500 transactions is way less than what you'd need. I mean, you could think about, you know, uh, what uh, even like, like Visa and MasterCard can handle. And I don't, I don't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I know it's tens of thousands of transactions per second. And so you might think, well, how is XRP going to handle that? Like, how is it actually going to solve even just the, the one use case, you know, functioning as a bridge currency? How is XRP going to be able to do that if it maxes out at about 1,500 transactions per second? And the answer is scalability, my friends. And so in a nutshell, the way it would work is you just send payments through in batches. And so rather than just having like 1,500 transactions and their individual transactions, you can group uh, as many transactions as you want into one single transactions and then send that through and then it's a ton more and so i was even listening to an interview between i can't remember who it was somebody was interviewing matt hamilton who is a ripple employee and i was listening to him and he he said really in theory uh this means that the xrp ledger can infinitely scale so if anybody's worried about transactions uh, the answer is no don't worry because <laughs> you because you can you can batch them up together and send them on through uh, it's, it's just, it's not going to matter. And so you look at that, you look at how transactions are almost free. You look at how XRP is one of the most liquid cryptocurrencies on the entire planet. It's about the only cryptocurrency on the planet used in enterprise grade software. And so you just got to think here, like if utility is going to sufficiently matter for the long haul, might XRP be worth substantially more in the future? Uh, and this is not me telling you to buy or sell or hold anything, but for me, the answer is yes. Unless things start to fall off the rails in an unexpected way, uh, look at the real world adoption that's occurring right now. I, I just feel like it's it's such an incredible opportunity. I've just my mind has been blown. I've been so appreciative and thankful of the fact that I got into crypto when I did. And at the time, like there, I remember when I jumped into 2017, there were all sorts of people saying, ah, when because you know people had jumped in about when I was like, ah, we're late to the party. Bitcoin, look at it, it's ran up to twenty thousand dollars. And I can understand why people would feel that because that used to be the present, but now that's the past. Okay, and now uh, people that, that jumped in in 2017, they're starting to look like OGs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like people that got in early. Uh, because the truth of the matter is, you know, crypto has been around for what, somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 years, basically. And so at this point now, I've actually been around for over a quarter of that. <laughs> so if you think about it like that, uh, so it only, so even the people that are jumping in now, yeah, it only seems like uh, you're late to the party until you let enough time pass and then you find out you're actually early to the party. And so uh, the people, even if you're just now jumping into crypto, I'm telling you, 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 you tell people you were in crypto in 2021 a decade from now, and they'll be like, oh, man, I wish I knew about it back then. That, that's what you're going to be hearing. I wish I knew about it. Um, and so, yes, it would have been nice if I knew about Bitcoin and crypto sooner. Uh, but 2017, I'm still early to the party, too. I'm happy to take that, frankly, here. All right. Uh, now into this piece. Flare Network's CEO Hugo Fillion explains why Flare's mainnet launch is postponed. Why is Songbird different from an ordinary testnet? Which features of Flare prevent the project from rolling out the mainnet version right now? Which applications are ready to go live on Flare? In his latest interview, CEO Hugo Fillion attempted to cover the most sensitive issues regarding Flare. The most interesting question for Flare, <coughs> support, uh, Flare supporters relate to the surprising release of Songbird's Canary Network, that is set to simulate the financial and technical designs expected to dominate in Flare's mainnet. And so look, I don't wanna go into great detail about this. I'm hoping most of you have, are caught up to speed on that, but all you need to know is that there's a new blockchain that is being created. It's it's not the Flare network, but it's it's practically the same. It's, it's intended, so it's a blockchain that's intended to have the same functionality of the Flare network, but it's live. So like you can actually engage in, in uh, activities that offer real utility. So it's not a test net, although you can test stuff on it. But a test net, by definition, it's, it's an environment that would be closed and there wouldn't be actual utility. But this is actually live. And so you wouldn't call it production ready. He doesn't anyway. He says it's not a test net, but it's also not production ready. It's just an actual functioning blockchain uh, that is, is, it's a playground. And uh, there could be security issues, and he's very upfront about that. But it's to test stuff there, and then the stuff that actually works after it's tested in the real world, then you can move it over to the Flare network, which is designed to be more secure. And so there is, as a result, since this is a separate blockchain from the Flare network, there is a cryptocurrency for this one also. And so you're getting free Spark tokens if you claim them, and you're also getting Songbird tokens now. And so wait, the piece continues. 
With this release, the mainnet launch of Flare is postponed until Q4 2020. Now, of course, since it's 2021, that would be a typo, uh, but it is a bunch of C students that write for crypto media, and so you get mistakes like this. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not actually being mean. I'm having a little fun here. Uh, Mr. Fillion stressed that his project doesn't have the luxury to be a ghost chain with trivial transactional value, low development activity, and a small community. According to him, the launch of Flare is one of the most publicized releases in crypto as it addresses one of the largest user bases ever. Yeah, so let me pause and just say this. This is the most important, most publicized, most adopted airdrop in the history of the crypto asset class. If you can find anything that's more of all those things I just said, let me know because I've never heard of it. And so I'm not even aware of a close second when it comes to this. And so given that this is at least should, if it, if it functions as promised, offer genuine utility. Like, what do you think all of this is going to be worth if it's actually adopted? Can you imagine a decade from now and here we are from the ground floor? Like, what is this going to look like? I can only speculate, but I'm just saying, like, if XRP already, at last market cycle, got up to almost $4, what do you think this thing's going to get to? Especially if you're talking about, um, you know, you know <laughs> your increase in utility for, like, so many different cryptocurrencies out there. So XRP, what else got attached? Uh, There's Doge, I believe. And was it Stellar was two, right? I'm not mistaken right there. I, mean, I, I, I can't remember what the entirety of the list is, but there's all sorts of cryptocurrencies that um, you can actually plug in here. And now they suddenly have utility, smart contract functionality. So like pulling in com all these different communities, including the XRP, which is one of the biggest communities in all of crypto. Like, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, it's 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 plausible that perhaps the Spark token, if you fast forward a decade, decade, depends on what's solving a bigger problem and what's gr more greatly adopted. Like, what if the Spark token's worth more than XRP in the future? I mean, I don't know. The IOU already is, uh, and that's just an IOU, so I don't really, I, I don't weight that heavily in my considerations here. But still, it's you know, it could be, and I wouldn't mind. I, I own both, so I'm thrilled either way. But anyway. Uh, the risks of a fast launch are too high with that level of interest to project from both blockchain entrepreneurs with their dApps and average users. As a result, the team has decided to launch a more sophisticated real-life development experiment called Songbird. Unlike ordinary testnets, Songbird comes with its own native token, SGB, uh, with limited supply. Sandbox tokens will be airdropped instead of being deployed to faucets. Uh, now, Mr. Fillion also emphasized that upon the Flare mainnet launch, his team will not bear responsibility for the progress of Songbird and Flare itself. All initiatives, protocol upgrades, and other major changes will be up to the community. Mr. Fillion's team, therefore, should not be treated as a vendor of cloud blockchain computation, he added. Another interesting question touched on the recent strategic investment round in which Flare Networks raised an eye-watering $11.3 million from iconic VC investors, including Kinetic Capital and Digital Currency Group. Uh, CEO Filion claims that this sum will be enough to fuel years of development for his engineers, so the next funding round is not at the top of Flare's agenda. So look, I'm very bullish on this, and I, I, admittedly I'm still learning about what's uh, like all the functionality of the... Uh, of the Flare network and, and Songbird. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say I know more about XRP and the XRP ledger, but I'm always in learning mode, so that's fine. But uh, what I know to this point, and, and look, look at the serious digital currency group, they're gigantic, and, and money's flowing in from them. I just, I'm telling you, there's something to this. Like it, it seems to have been decided that this is one of those things that could just be absolutely gigantic, and here we are at the ground floor. So I don't know for sure. There's no way we can know for sure. But damn, I am thankful for this opportunity. Let's just say that. Uh, and then I will be brief on this last story from Cointelegraph. Global crypto ATM installations have increased by 70% in 2021. Uh, ATMs, they just seem so old-timey to me. Just, I mean, the concept of, like, your regular ATMs. Oh, yes, please, give me physical paper money. I would absolutely love that. Uh, no, I would not, though, is the thing. No, I hate paper money. The only thing I hate more than paper money is metallic currency. Physical metal coins? No. No, thank you, sir or madam. I'll have none of it. Metallic currency. I scoff at you. Alongside cryptocurrency's decade-long adoption drive, the momentum behind the installation of crypto ATMs continues across the globe. Based on Coin ATM Radar's latest data, crypto ATM installations in 2021 have witnessed a spike of 71.73% 
pulling up the numbers from 13,993 on January 1st to 24,030 at the time of reporting. So this is monstrous growth. And so, because I, I just, I'm sitting here wondering, it's like, so the people that are already in crypto, if you're already in, uh, my guess, this is just my, off the top of my head, like how this strikes me. I think that those people are not likely to use a crypto ATM. So then if you're not in the you're not in the crypto, maybe you'd heard about it and you're, you're just walking down, uh, walking down the street and then suddenly you see this crypto ATM thing and just on a whim you're like, I'm going to buy me some crypto I don't know anything about. Like is is that is is that what's functionally happening? So somebody's just walking down the street and they see a crypto AP, ATM and uh, it, it's just is it one of these these mouth breathers out there like, oh, oh my God, oh, that's that Bitcoin thing I saw on the television. Oh, let, me, let me step down my, my sandwich. I'm going to buy some, I'm going to buy some, bean, buy, buy some Bitcoin. Like, is that, is that what's happening here? Because I, outside of that, like, I just, I don't know. No, I am genuinely curious. So, like, I understand there's a, a genuine market for this and there's a smart business model for these people. So I do acknowledge that. I'm just curious. I don't know what that's like because I, I, don't, I don't come from that. Uh, but clearly these are money rackets for the companies putting them out there. That's good. Like, I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. It's, it's helping actual adoption of cryptocurrency and uh, getting the mouth breathers and everybody else into crypto super duper. But I would love to hear if, if you have a personal a story of interacting with one of these things. Uh, like what made you actually use it rather than hopping on a cryptocurrency exchange on your computer or your smartphone? I don't know. So I'm not against them. I'm for them, to be clear. I'm, I'm super duper for them. I, I guess in a nutshell, it just comes down to me not understanding who, who they're attracting and why. Like how is it working? I'm just curious. I'm genuinely curious. I'll go ahead and wrap up there, though. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.